The subject of this short presentation is the importance of spacing in a successful defensive structure, one that provides a line at all times that spans the width of the field. The width of a rugby field is 70 metres. For both examples included, two defensive players are committed to the breakdown, two players are defending the short side, three players open side on the inside of the attacking first receiver, and three players are back, 15, 14 and 9. Assuming that including the two players on the short side and the three players inside first receiver, that 20 metres is defended, then the other six players are left to defend about 50 metres. Initial spacing between the defenders outside first receiver will be dependent on that of the attack. However, in both examples, I've used 6 metres and 7 metres between defenders. In the 6 metre example, around 56 metres of width is defended as highlighted in the diagram, leaving about 14 metres uncovered. This essentially means that as long as the defenders stay in line, the maximum distance that they may have to move laterally is only 14 metres. Similarly, in the 7 metre example, there is only 7 metres left to defend, and as a result, the maximum lateral distance that a defender may have to move is 7 metres. In the next few slides, include diagrams of poor defensive movement from set piece. Essentially here the defence is not working as a line. Individual defenders all run what we call covering lines, which mean basically defenders anticipate where a tackle will be made and shortcut to that spot. As a result, defenders run behind each other and lose their alignment and spacing so that when a tackle is finally made, most of the defence ends up behind the ball and very narrow. Subsequently lose width and organisation in the defensive line, leaving them vulnerable to a switch in play. A good example of this is shown in the next clip. Here the entire forward pack, including seven, corner flag from set piece. In fact, had seven been running his correct line to the ball, they would have got a turnover. However, he runs behind and past ten his outside defender and as a result has to backtrack back to a position where he can make a tackle. The rest of the forward pack are the same. The next slide is essentially a good comparison as to how much space the field is left undefended when this occurs. In this diagram over half the field isn't defended. The next slide showed diagrammatically what should happen. Each defender performs his first phase role and when the ball moves past him, maintains his line and spacing and alignment on the inside of the defender outside of him. When the tackle is made, there are quick adjustments to cover the far side of the breakdown and for the rest of the defenders to get back on side and in the defensive line with spacing and width of the line maintained. The last two slides show a comparison between good defence and poor defence in terms of territory that each defender has to cover in order to get back into an effective position in the defensive line. Finally, the last piece of footage is a good example of this being done very well. As Scotland moved the ball to the width, they challenged the Wallabies, however the Wallabies maintain their line, spacing and alignment so that when Scotland changed the direction of attack, they have the full width of the field covered. Eventually, because they maintain their composure, alignment and spacing, they're able to force an error and get the turnover.